Good afternoon and welcome to our weekly briefing. Uh, let me begin with the Kashmir Black Day, which was observed yesterday to condemn 74 years of Indian illegal occupation of parts of Jammu and Kashmir and to reaffirm Pakistan's unwavering support for the just struggle of the Kashmiri people. And you saw a strong demonstration of this solidarity throughout Pakistan and in countries across the world. To honor the supreme sacrifices of these three generations of Kashmiris, Foreign Secretary Sohail Mahmood planted three chinar saplings at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. A solidarity walk initiated from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was led by President Dr. Arif Alvi, who also addressed the participants. A memento depicting the ongoing human rights violations in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir was also presented to the President. In their messages on the Black Day, the President, Prime Minister, the Foreign Minister reiterated Pakistan's strong resolve to continue to support the Kashmiri people until the realization of their inalienable right to self-determination. In continuation of Pakistan's regular communications since August 2019, to keep the United Nations fully apprised of the grave situation in IIOJK, the Foreign Minister has also addressed a letter to the UN Secretary General and the President of the Security Council. A letter has also been addressed to the European Union High Representative Joseph Borrell. The Foreign Minister has drawn attention to India's continued denial of the right of self-determination to the people of IIOJK for more than seven decades and to its recent illegal and unilateral actions since 5th of August 2019, including the demographic re-engineering that are in blatant violation of United Nations Security Council resolutions and international law. The Foreign Minister also highlighted the ongoing widespread human rights violations by Indian occupation forces in IIOJK, which have also been documented with incriminating evidence in the comprehensive dossier presented by Pakistan last month to the international community. Around the world, a range of activities took place, including by our missions to raise global awareness about the Jammu and Kashmir dispute and to reaffirm solidarity with the Kashmir cause. Meanwhile, in IIOJK, India has unleashed worst form of state terrorism. Ten Kashmiris have been martyred in Sirinagar and Pulwama districts since 15th of October. It is deeply concerning that India continues to expand its toolkit to oppress and harass the innocent Kashmiris and India's minorities, particularly Muslims, on baseless grounds. We saw that in the reprehensible attacks against Kashmiri students following Pakistan's win in the T20 match against India. There are also disturbing reports about Kashmiri students and youth being charged under the draconian and arbitrary unlawful activities prevention act. India's aggressive and malicious designs against Pakistan also continue otherwise. For example, the reported killing recently of a Pakistani civilian prisoner, Mr. Zia Mustafa, in an incident involving Indian occupation forces in the Poonch sector of IIOJK. We have condemned this and the Indian Shahjid Affairs was summoned to the Foreign Office. A strong protest has been lodged the government of India was urged to urgently authenticate this particular incident, undertake a credible and, invest and transparent investigation, and ensure justice by holding the perpetrators to account. While explanation on this case has been sought, let me also remind that we still await the findings of an investigation into the Jodhpur incident in which 11 Pakistani citizens lost their lives under mysterious circumstances. As you are aware, climate change is one of the top priorities of the government and the Prime Minister is a leading advocate. Pakistan's policies and initiatives have been widely acclaimed. In this backdrop, 
and keeping in perspective our long-standing fraternal ties with Saudi Arabia, Prime Minister Imran Khan visited the kingdom from 23rd to 25th October to attend the launch of the Middle East Green Initiative. At the MGI summit, the Prime Minister shared his perspective on the challenges faced by the developing countries due to climate change and highlighted Pakistan's experience of launching nature-based solutions to address the environmental challenges. The Prime Minister also addressed the Saudi-Pakistani Investment Forum and had a number of bilateral interactions, including with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, the Crown Prince of Bahrain, and the US Special Envoy on Climate Change. During the last week, as you're aware, the Prime Minister also held telephonic conversations with world leaders, including most notably with President Xi Jinping of China, President Shokat Mirziyoyev of Uzbekistan, and Prince Charles, Prince of Wales. Now, coming to Afghanistan, you have seen Pakistan's continued engagement and active diplomacy. Foreign Minister Qureshi was in Tehran for the second ministerial meeting of neighboring countries of Afghanistan that was held yesterday. In the meeting and other bilateral engagements, the foreign minister shared Pakistan's perspective on the latest developments in Afghanistan. He reiterated Pakistan's belief that the neighbors have a direct stake in peace, stability, and prosperity of Afghanistan. It was therefore important to remain engaged with a view to evolving a coordinated regional approach. During the visit, the foreign minister also interacted with the Iranian leadership and held meetings with his Uzbek, Turkmen, and Tajik counterparts. Earlier, the foreign minister had visited Kabul on 21st October, during which he had wide-ranging talks with the leadership of the interim government. The foreign minister already had a detailed interaction with you on his return and shared some key takeaways with regard to what, what Pakistan was doing to help. And this included, for example, the abolition of gate pass for travel to Pakistan from Afghanistan, exemption on visa fees applicable till 31st of December, issuance of online visas to avoid heavy rush outside our missions, inclusion of Afghanistan in the business visa list, revision of NCOC SOPs for Afghan students, and grant of visa upon arrival for medical cases. Besides that, the foreign minister also announced rupees 5 billion for humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. With that, I conclude, and I am willing to take your questions.